In this video, we are going to understand what is two cavity klystone, what is working of it, and how does it overcome the limitations of conventional tube, and what are the applications of two cavity klystone. But before we begin, we must understand this two cavity klystone comes under in which category of microwave tubes. So basically, there are two types of microwave tubes. First is linear beam tube, which is also called as O-type tube, and second is cross-fed tubes, which is also called as M-type microwave tubes. So in linear beam tubes, what so what are the basic difference between this linear beam tubes and cross-fed tubes? So in linear beam tubes, the DC magnetic field is parallel to the DC electric field, and in cross-fed tubes both will be perpendicular to each other means DC magnetic field will be perpendicular to DC electric field so first of all we will see the linear beam tubes so in this video we are going to mainly focus on the two cavity klystron but we are going to step by step first of all overview of the different types of microwave tubes and in upcoming videos we will see each type of microwave tubes in detail so what is O type tube or linear beam tubes? So there are fur further classification in linear beam tubes. So linear beam tubes is of two types, cavity type and slow wave structure type. So cavity is also called as cavity type tubes also called as resonant tubes or klystron. And klystron is further classified into two categories, multi-cavity klystron and reflex klystron. And slow wave structure is classified in two categories forward wave and backward wave forward wave is also also categorized in helix traveling wave tube and couple cavity tube couple cavity traveling wave tube and backward wave is classified into two categories backward wave backward uh, amplifier and backward oscillator you should not panic or worry by seeing this complex classification by understanding each one of the klystron you will be you will see you will um, feel easy to understand this all type of classification better to go one by one in depth okay so what is klystron so klystron is a linear beam tube now you know the klystron is one type of linear beam tube so klystron tube is also a vacuum tube that can be operated as an oscillator or as an amplifier so based on the these are two these two are configurations of klystron that oscillator and amplifier so these two con configuration is named as multi cavity klystron and reflex klystron multi cavity klystron is nothing but microwave amplifier low power microwave amplifier and the reflex klystron is low power microwave oscillator so multi cavity klystron means there will be more than one cavity so two cavity klystron three cavity klystrons are types of multi cavity klystron and we know that the reflex klystron is low power microwave oscillator so multi cavity klystron um, in this video we are going to understand two cavity klystron so to understand the working of two cavity klystron we must we, we should have assumed something so some assumption we will take that transit time in the cavity gap is very small compared to period of input rf signal which was the limitation of in conventional tube what is transit what is transit time so transit time is uh, the time required to flow to pass the electron to this buncher cavity okay from here from here to here means this is this is the transit time so transit time is we are assuming the transit time is less than the time period of the input rf signal okay okay second assumption we will take that the input rf uh, amplitude is very small compared to the dc beam uh, voltage why why we are taking this assumption 
because suppose transit time is equal to the uh, 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 the clock period of input rf signal the input rf signal will accelerate or decelerate the the electron beam okay so if uh, if the electrons comes under positive half cycle of the input rf signal it will accelerate if it comes under negative half cycle of uh, rf signal it will decelerate suppose the transit time is equal to the clock period of input rf signal then what will happen the electron which comes in positive half cycle will also suffer to negative half cycle of the input rf signal so the electron which have to be accelerated will in some time it will decelerate also so it will not pass the cavity it will um, it will go and again attracted toward cavity okay so that's why the uh, if suppose it occurs suppose it occurs if the input rf signal amplitude is less so so resultant means dc beam voltage plus input rf signal voltage is the resultant voltage so if input rf voltage is less than the dc beam voltage then resultant will be positive so the that the effect will not that much bad so that's why we are taking this assumption that input rf amplitude is very small compared to dc beam voltage if you have any doubt please write into the comment box so that i can clarify and comment also the rf fields are totally confined in the cavity caps zero in the drift space okay so electrons leave the cathode with zero initial velocity this is another assumption and space charge effects are negligible okay this is the picture of two cathodic electron the cathode is there we have we'll see in detail so so two cathodic electron is nothing but a microwave amplifier and working principle is velocity modulation and current modulation okay we'll see what are this modulation and electron injection will be from the cathode okay so i will explain that what is velocity modulation and current modulation this is your buncher cavity or input cavity this is your output cavity or catcher cavity the rf input will be applied this is this in this buncher cavity and the output will be taken from this catcher cavity so depending on the input rf voltage the in, incoming electron beams will be will form bunch okay so will form bunch means velocity will, of the electrons will be modulated so, the, so velocity modulation will occur in input cavity or buncher cavity and the depending on this bunch so there will be change in the charge with respect to time because the electron bunch will be will be formed so so some bunch will be dense some bunch can be means uh, less dense or what we call light or less number of electrons in some bunch will be there so the charge quantity will be different so current will be different so current will be modulated in catcher cavity okay so electron will be injected from cathode electrons reach at first cavity with uniform velocity this is our assumption okay this is correct actually so dc beam voltage is constant so the velocity will also be constant what will be the velocity so 1 by 2 mv square is equal to is equal to e into v not so from this we can find the velocity okay and this v not is constant so okay and the so velocity modulation i already explained you that in buncher cavity by input rf signal velocity will be modulated and bunch and bunch will be form, formed and the in uh, catcher cavity current modulation will occur what is working i already explained you but by showing diagram you will explain bet you will understand better suppose suppose this is your dc beam voltage so due to this the electron gulf will, will emit some electrons and it will it will x it will go toward the tube now in the when the electrons come at this point suppose the average time to come the average time required to uh, for the electron to come 
to the Banchar Ghat is T0 and to exit Banchar Ghat is Tz. So transit time will be tau equal to Tz minus T0. And suppose distance is d, so d by V0. V0 is the average velocity. And the this is transit time, so transit angle will be omega tau. Okay. So suppose suppose there is some reference electron which come at time which come at time uh, tb which come at time tb okay so at at this time is at this point of time tb the input rf signal is zero so at at with the electron which come at that point will uh, will experience zero input rf signal so it will flow with only dc beam voltage so it will take some times so this is also called an e naught reference electron and this will take some time okay to reach the buncher center so uh, so this is your uh, distance okay bunching distance and uh, sorry a uh, tube distance you can call you can call it and this is your time axis okay so suppose suppose the reference electron influence some time tb and the electron which come earlier at time ta will influence negative half cycle of or negative peak of the input rf signal so it will decelerate and it will take more time and and the suppose this is called as early electron and the electron which come later will call as late electron which influence the maximum peak of the input rf signal and, uh, and, and it will accelerate and take less time to reach the uh, bunching center okay so if you see is to so all three electrons reach at the bunching center at the same time but take different at the same time but take different amount of time because of the in different value of input rf signal so so all three electrons comes uh, entry at the uh, entry in the bunching grid at the different time but form bunch form bunch means all three electrons reach uh, the bunching center at the same time so form bunch okay so different amount different uh, electron bunches will be formed okay so the velocity of these electrons uh, will be calculated with this formula v0 into 1 plus v1 sin sampling theta g by 2 by 2 v0 sin omega tg minus theta g by 2 i hope you understood the working of the two kinetic electron and what are the specifications of two kinetic electron beam voltage uh, is generally up to few hundreds of kilovolt and if you see efficiency it is up to 40 percent and power up to output is average continuous wave power is up to 500 kilowatt and pulse power is tens of megawatt up to 50 gigahertz so it is operate operatable at high frequency very high frequency power gain is about 30 db okay and what are the applications the klystron amplifier we know that it it is a it is a cavity type or resonant type of klystron amplifier so it is a, a two kinetic klystron so we know that klystron is of two type multi kinetic klystron and reflex klystron and multi kinetic klystron is nothing but microwave amplifier so it as power output tubes this can be uh, this can be there can be applications in ultra high frequency tv transmitters in tropospheres scatter transmitters in satellite communication ground station in radar transmitters okay so it, as 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 amplifier it can be used and in uh, to convert hydrocarbons in natural gases it can be used and biomedical applications also it can be used i hope you understand the working of the to get strong and if you see there is no capacitance lead inductance inter electrode capacitance so it will it will overcome the uh, limitations of conventional tube okay thank you